Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lieutenant Stephen Rogers here on the East Coast of the United States of America. I want to welcome all of you from throughout the United States, Canada, and around the world who have been tuning in and watching our Thursday night broadcast, uh, particularly focusing in on the crisis in Canada. Now, uh, I just want to uh, share with the Canadian people that if you didn't think there were any heroes left on this earth uh, who are standing up for freedom and liberty, I'm going to introduce to you an extraordinary leader in a minute. Uh, a hero of freedom and liberty, uh, and I've received some uh, letters and emails from people who heard that she was coming on tonight, and the truckers in uh, Canada and their family members want to ex ex extend their great uh, their, their gratitude for the fact that she had spoken up on behalf of freedom and liberty. Folks, it's 1 a.m. Uh, where uh, the Honorable uh, Catherine Anderson is. I'm going to play with for you just a seven second video. Now it's a little rudimentary here. We were unable to upload it on our computer, but we do have it on a cell phone. And I, I want to show you the extraordinary uh, courageous leadership of somebody who's standing up for uh, freedom and liberty. So I'm gonna play this for about seven seconds and then I'll introduce our guest. And it would have been more appropriate for Mr. Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, to address this House according to Article 144, an article which was specifically designed to debate violations of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law, which is clearly the case with Mr. Trudeau. Then again, a prime minister who openly admires the Chinese basic dictatorship who tramples on fundamental rights by persecuting and criminalizing his own citizens as terrorists just because they dared to stand up to his perverted concept of democracy should not be allowed to speak in this house at all. Mr. Trudeau, you are a disgrace for any democracy. Please spare us your presence. Thank you. Boy, I'll tell you, folks, you talk about <laughs> courage and leadership. Well, without further ado, I'd like to uh, extend my uh, uh, grateful thanks to the Honorable Catherine Anderson and uh, Honorable uh, uh, Member of Parliament of the EU. Thank you for joining us at this very, very early morning hour in your country. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on. Well, thank you. Uh, well, obviously, you uh, sent a very clear message to not only the... Uh, Trudeau government, but to uh, people who are in leadership positions around the world, that there are still people like yourself and others who are going to stand up for freedom and liberty. And and man, I'll tell you, you told it like it was. So so so, uh, how do you feel? People are asking you, how do you feel right now with regard to what's happening in Canada? And I and you and I had a discussion earlier in the week when you said that the American people need to wake up too because uh, it's coming our way. Yes, it absolutely is. And that's that's what's actually scary about this, because what we have seen in Canada uh, is not only happening in Canada, it's happening in, in literally every single Western democracy around the world. And this is what's scary about this, because, you know, if you had one country that kind of, you know, where things went that uh, go south or, you know, the democratic principles are no longer respected and, and uh uh, adhere to um that's one thing you know you have the rest of the world that can intervene and you know call them out but if it if this it, this is happening in every single country every single western democracy uh this is scary and it is happening in every western democracy and that's that's the scary part about it you know i received uh, i i'd say for the first time since we've been addressing the issues in canada i did receive uh, a pretty uh, a couple of nasty emails. I'm sure you have too, uh, from people. Uh, you know, Yankee, Yankee, go home, stay in your own country. Uh, what are you involved in this our country for? Well, I'm going to answer that, and then I, I'm going to ask you the question: Why are you involved? And my answer is: Look at the uh, Trudeau government uh, has created what I believe to be a clear and present national security danger to the United States of America. Uh, so uh, the people of Canada have been extraordinary the way they've handled themselves. No rioting, no no beating police officers. It was the other way around. Exactly. Uh, so what a shining example of how to protest and do it within the framework of the law. So this is why I'm involved. I, I want to help the people in Canada because they're helping me and they're helping my country. And 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 uh, uh, how would you like to weigh in on that with regard to what's going on in Europe? Well, uh, that is actually a job of a of, of, of a citizen 
you know, he's supposed to fight for the democracy, the rule of law and freedom and, and everything that, that goes with it. I mean, once citizens start, you know, basically just going to sleep, as I would put it, um, well, there is a saying, you know, if you sleep in a democracy, you will have a rude awakening in a dictatorship, you know. So, um, but in the Western democracy, especially, I would say it, it started maybe 15, 20 years ago. But in the last 10 years, even the last six, seven years, uh, they really stepped up their game, you know. So it's like we, we're seeing a lot of things where, um, and of course, it's always uh, for the good of the people, um, they introduce some legislation and, you know, it's all for your good and, and we, we are the good guys. We want to do this for you because we really care about you. No, they do not care about us. They care only about themselves, you know. So they always package it very neatly, nicely. You know, you have the, the, the fight against each and, you know, they want to fight fake news and all of that. But the problem is, I mean, how do you define hate speech, you know? So this is where it starts. And, you know, simply stating, for example, that an Italian is not a Frenchman, that is considered hate speech because it's ridiculous, you know? So fake news, of course, everything that is not along the narrative that they want is fake news, you know? So you can present facts or whatever, and it's all made up. And of course, everyone, you know, speaking against the narrative is right wing extremist or a small French minority. It's all of that. So you get stigmatized, discredited. Um, it, it's happening all over. Yeah. You know, they tend to they tend to demonize patriots. Uh, now, we had something happen today in America where the Biden administration uh, comes up with this idea. And I'm sure he got this idea from Canada that they're going to set up an office that will monitor and define what is uh, fake news on the internet. I mean, people's free speech. Uh, now, now, uh, yeah, now who's, who's in charge of that? The government. Uh, exactly. So you are absolutely right. You, you got a situation in Canada uh, where it's, it's, it's looked like it's gonna take effect and then the domino effect. Uh, and we've said that all along for many years about communism. We were afraid that the communist party uh, ideology would be a domino effect, and we're, we're seeing it here. What, what's extraordinary about what you did, uh, you're probably, the, at least to my knowledge, the only uh, uh, leader on this planet who stood <laughs> up, and I mean, just directly, uh, I mean, directly addressed this issue. Uh, a number of people are, are curious about your colleagues at the European Parliament. Uh, question number one, I'm sure there's a lot of them that wanted to do what you did, but don't have the courage to do it. And secondly, agree with you, but simply won't stand up and, and, and state the case. Uh, could you tell us about maybe some of the support behind the scenes you have? Um, actually, the, I, I wasn't the only one that, that spoke up. Um, there was a colleague of mine. He, he did basically the same thing. And then, uh, of course, there was the colleague from Croatia, uh, um, MEP uh, Kola Zusic, I think his name was. I, I keep forgetting. So anyway, he had regular speaking time. Uh, on that issue, um, I, I, what actually I did, I raised the point of order. That was the only way I, I could have spoken on that issue at all. Uh, and of course, I was aiming at him not to be allowed to speak, uh, to to uh, to address us, uh, which I never expected a majority to, to to get behind me. But I only had one minute to basically uh, um, get my point across, and I guess I, I used that mini pretty good pretty well so um it well the thing is yes there is support uh, you know when you meet colleagues you know uh walk down the hallway or whatever you, you get a thumbs up or something like that but it's a very very few people the majority of uh elected representatives and it's not just in the eu parliament i would think it's pretty much in every a democratic parliament around the world, they are more concerned uh, with uh, getting reelected. They are they are more concerned about you know not offending any of their colleagues because they they need their support you know when the next next election comes up and stuff like that. So they actually have forgotten what their job is. They have forgotten who they were elected by, and they have completely forgotten what they were elected to do, which is 
to look out for the best interest of the people to have you know their benefit uh, in mind uh, when they legislation pull up or you know regulations whatever um but they seem to have completely forgotten that uh, and plus i mean you know it's it's kind of it, it is it is a nice life you know as a parliamentarian so um why should you raise any trouble there you know if you get paid uh, and you know people are all your friends and everything it's a good life but this is not our job and they have completely forgotten that you know uh the uh european nations uh i mean you guys have gone through hell i mean throughout history more so than america i mean look we've all been involved in wars but i find that uh in in my country here uh, a lot of americans are really unaware of the threat that we're facing i mean you all lived under pretty tough times back in the 40s the 30s and leading up to uh uh you know the cold war and still beyond that and Right. And uh, I, I see a generation of Americans here who are just unaware of the threat of uh, communism right. in our country. Ronald Reagan knew about it. I mean, he fought it. He brought down the, with yeah. the help of uh, the Europeans, the Soviet Empire. But but what's happening now is with broadcasts like this and with you doing what you did, uh, I, I really don't want you to underestimate the impact that you're, you had and are having uh, to uh, do what you're doing, as well as the way the Canadian people are handling it. Uh, I, I've gotten thousands of emails since we started this. I'm going to ask you to weigh in on something. Uh, they're heartbreaking. Uh, people are living in a free country. Uh, they feel threatened and scared and frightened for their children. And up until at least recently, when we really started to move along with this, uh, they lost a lot of hope and, and, and needed encouragement. And after you did what you did and said what you said, I got to tell you that uh, that that barometer of hope i mean really really lit up like a lighthouse because the email started to turn around and say wow people are listening and people do care yeah. uh, so, so so could you weigh in on that that the subject of fear versus faith and, and courage uh it's, i think it's important for people to hear it from you yeah um well this is this is how dictatorships work you know you always tell people uh, you are all alone with your opinion. You are all alone. You 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 got it all wrong. You're a small French minority. So um, what I try to do, and actually what the Canadian truckers did uh, for me, is uh, you know they, they were there and they were doing this, and I was like, okay, this is what the people want, you know. So um, it's kind of like um, it was a, a not a one way street. It was a two way street, actually. So, um, yeah. So when I can, you know, stand up on, on a world stage, which EU Parliament, it is a world stage and can just, you know, confirm I heard you and I know what you want and I'm going to speak out, you know, from my position. So, um, yeah, I've been told that uh, I've given people hope. Um, which is good because people do need hope. But like I said, this is only part of the story. The other part of the story is that we too needed hope, you know, we as, as parliamentarians. So, and we need the people to take to the streets. We need to show their governments, we do not want to do this. And then, you know, they can get the help they need by someone else speaking up possibly, you know. Um, but like I said, th that's their game, you know, always making people believe that they're all alone and everyone else think they're stupid for saying that. No, we're not alone. We're actually quite a few people, um, but a lot of them have, have been scared uh, uh, into not saying anything anymore. I mean, over here in, in Germany, you know, livelihoods are threatened, you know, so you you use may use your license to run a business or whatever. You know, especially with the whole COVID uh, uh, madness, um, when when they shut down the, the businesses altogether, then uh, they forced people. You know, that the hospitals stuff like that. They had to get vaccinated. So then uh, they were told, well, we no longer have staff in the hospitals. And the public was told, well, yeah, the staff is not coming anymore because they're sick and tired of having to treat unvaccinated people. But it was the other way around. They had no staff anymore because they refused to get vaccinated for very good reasons. So it, this is now all kind of coming out. But people were actually, they 
they were kept in fear and they had been told, if you don't do this, you know, this and that is going to happen to you. And all the politicians over here, it was like, if you don't get vaccinated, you are out of the game. You know, we no longer want you in our society. You don't belong to us anymore. We were called Vernons. I mean, the, the worst things, you know. So um, this does have an effect on people. And um, the thing is, yeah, that's happened before. And it was a time that all the Germans swore we would never, ever allow again. And I'm all I have to say is, well, take a look around. It is happening again. You know, I read the story uh, in the Bible this morning, the book of uh, Nehemiah, where uh, he went to build the walls, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem with Ezra. Yeah. And he was threatened, right? He was threatened by uh, Santa Blad and uh, by these powerful armies. And 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 he went to God and he prayed and, and, and the Lord told him, look, at, you got nothing to be afraid of. You just stand strong and be tough. And you just have something interesting. You just said something interesting. We truly outnumber the other side. We outnumber those who are Absolutely. supporting the tyrants. So, uh, and I think what they didn't expect, they meaning the Trudeaus of the world and the other tyrants and the communists that we're dealing with here in America, I don't think they expected uh, people like yourself, uh, those of us in America who's now partnering with the Canadians. And they're probably going to be more countries. I've heard from people from around different countries that want a partnership. And, and, and we're standing very strong together. And we find out that those who are, as you say, doing all the uh, screaming and yelling and trying to instill fear into the people, it's the mouse that roared. They really don't have any teeth. They just exactly. roar, right, like mice. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to roar like a lion because we're going to take some action. In fact, the Canadians, uh, a lot of the Americans watching tonight, uh, after I after I let you go and get some sleep, I'm going to share with them that we're going to take an extraordinary action with regard to Trudeau, and I'll announce that a little later. But so so here we are, okay? And uh, you have been a great great help. Uh, uh, I mean, a tremendous Thank help. You. And uh, I, I just want to say, God bless you. And do you have any final words you'd like to say before you, you get? I'm sure you got a busy day tomorrow. It's so late there. My goodness. Thank you for, again for joining us. Well, I, all I want to say is, you know, democracy is not a God given. Um, the rule of law and, you know, fundamental rights, these didn't just fall out of the blue sky, you know, on one fine sunny day. No, they had to be fought for. And that was luckily done, you know, by our fathers and forefathers. And a lot of them actually spilled blood over this to leave us a world, you know, where we can live in a democracy, freedom. And um, we should not really not take this lightly. Uh, we should, you know, appreciate this precious, very precious gift. But it also means you have to fight for it because people are trying to take this away from us now. And um, they're so clever, you know, about going about this. So, uh, but we need to be strong and we need to realize it is our democracy. It is our rights and it's our freedom. And no one, no one is going to take that away from us. But we have to fight. And your words have given a lot of strength to people this evening. Thank you, uh, Honorable Catherine Anderson. Thank you. God bless you. And I, I hope to. Thank you uh, so much for having you. me. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, folks, what can I tell you? You know, if you ever thought there weren't heroes left in this world, you just saw one. Uh, and I've got to tell you, I, I know she probably is uh, would not want to be called a hero. But uh, after hearing uh, what she and seeing what she did at the parliament in Europe, uh, boy, I tell you, she's not standing alone. She's got millions of people with her, behind her. And we're going to make sure that uh, we uh, get in touch with her again. Now, all right, so well, I'm going to answer a question that many of you have been asking tonight. Uh, we've been going over a lot of issues and problems with regard to the Canadian people. Well, we're going to begin to take action. We're going to begin to take decisive action. One thing good about my country here in the United States, we basically basically could do what we want and what, how we want to do it uh, without worrying about the government because they've tried in the past coming down on those of us who do what we want to do. It ends up that the courts side with us all the time. And so I'm not going to be concerned about what I'm about to announce to you. Now, we've gathered, I, I've got to tell you, hundreds and hundreds of videotapes have been sent to us, uh, thousands of emails, and, and I've got to tell you, it's piling up left and right. So we're going to start a project here. It's going to be called Project Maple Leaf. And we're going to gather, we're calling right now and consider this a call to uh, people who are listening tonight. 
we put out the word and we're going to put it out officially in a day or two uh, to uh, seeking the assistance of uh, U.S. military intelligence officers and law enforcement investigators who are retired, who have uh, knowledge on how to collect, gather and analyze information and intelligence. Uh, we're going to start to do that, folks, uh, gather it all together, put it together, look at it, analyze it. And we're going to put together what we call Project Maple Leaf. It's almost like the 9-11 Commission report that we had here in America. And it's going to be all focused on the Trudeau government uh, and the fact that they have been too cozy, in our view, based on what we're seeing with the communists. Now, why am I doing it? All right. People are asking me, well, why? Why are you live in America? Why are you doing it? Because we have to get people to understand, like the good and honorable uh, Catherine Anderson just said, that what happens in one country could very well happen in another. And as far as I'm concerned, what's happening in Canada is too close for comfort for the United States of America. Our congressional representatives, our senators, and most politicians uh, have no idea, have no idea what's going on in Canada. They're too uh, focused on their election. Uh, they're Obviously, they're focused and should be focused on the southern border. And But you see, we see the threat clearly on the southern border. Believe me, I've worked at FBI, National Joint Terrorism Task Force, worked in law enforcement, did it all, folks. We see the clear and present danger crossing our southern border. But what our elected officials and those in power don't see is the clear and present danger on our northern border. And I've got to tell you, folks, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting, just gathering piles of information coming to us from all, all sorts of sources. Uh, and uh, I feel that I've seen enough. And now is the time to take action. So what are we going to do with this information? Well, we're going to make sure it's, it's, it's uh, credible, it's verifiable. We're going to put it together. And uh, just like you see this here, like you see, a, you see this, folks, I'm going to show you something. This is, this is a regular book, right? See this? Well, this is how the final report, I hope, is going to look. Now, what are we going to do with the report? Well, we're going to do a few things. It's going to take a few months, but we're going to put it all together. Every single congressional representative in the United States, we hope to get that report. Every single congressional representative, every single senator. I want them to see and know and understand what is happening across our border. That's number one. Number two, we're going to publicize it. We're going to publicize it here in the United States and we're going to publicize it worldwide. That's exactly what we're going to do, folks. We want everyone to understand what's happening here in the United States of America, as well as in Canada, and it could very well happen in their countries. You heard the Honorable Catherine Anderson say, we don't ever want this to happen again in Germany or anywhere in Europe, and I believe her. But I believe one of the problems that we're facing is education. Education and knowledge is power. And as I shared with uh, the member of parliament we just spoke with of the European Union, that uh, a lot of people just simply have no idea. They have no idea. Well, we're going to make it part of our mission. By the way, you know, part of our mission of Campaign for America is to empower people, to educate people, to get people to understand what the political issues uh, are, are, they are confronting today. There's no greater issue to me right now in this country, the United States of America, than to help the Canadian people overcome what they're facing through what I believe to be a clear and present danger to the national security of the United States of America being led by Justin Trudeau. So now these are our plans. I know it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be heartaches uh, uh, here and there. We're going to be in the valleys. We're going to be scratching our heads, but we're not going nowhere. We're going to make sure this job gets done. And I'll tell you something else, folks, that that uh, we're going to put out, if not tonight, like I said, tomorrow, the call for investigators. You know, there are a lot of retired uh, intelligence officers and investigators uh, in law enforcement, in the military. Uh, they want something to do. They want to begin to give back to their country. So these positions that we're calling people to join are all uh, volunteer. They know that. We've already got uh, about a half a dozen uh, uh, people already have been in touch with us. And we're going to make sure that we do what must be done. We know how to analyze intelligence. We know how to collect it. We now know how to pull it all to together and connect dots. And so the objective is to make sure that this gets to at least all of the American representatives here. Uh, but, but believe me, folks, if we have to go to Washington and sit with them, we will. Uh, I could tell you we've done it before on other issues. We will again. 
uh, and we're going to make sure that uh, what we have will be published worldwide. And I'm sure that what we have when we put it together, we'll send it to, of course, individuals like the Honorable Catherine uh, Anderson there in Europe. So if you think, if you think in Canada that you have not had impact on the world, if you think that you're alone, well, you're not alone. Believe me, you're not. And to the citizens uh, uh, who have uh, sent me, I know, normally don't do this, but I, you know, I, I, I just want to share with you how some of the things we go through, the threats and the bullying and all that. Well, you know what? We're not going nowhere. Uh, Yankee go home. Well, I am home. Uh, and uh, why am I involved in this? I'm involved in this because we fight for freedom and liberty worldwide. What happens to Canada can happen here. What happens here can happen there. What these tyrants don't understand is that they lit a fire under us, folks. They put a fire in our belly. And, you know, I look at uh, these difficulties that we face, you know, when we go through storms. And you think about this in your personal life. You ever go through a storm and say, why? My God, why is this happening? What's going to happen? Well, it is because of the storm that we are now going through, that the Canadian people have faced and that the American people are facing, that we have come together. So it backfired, Mr. Trudeau. It backfired members of the Canadian Parliament who are backing uh, a regime, and I call it no longer a government, but a regime, the Trudeau regime in Canada, and getting very close to the Biden regime here in the United States, as I shared earlier. I, I couldn't believe my eyes when I read a, a, a press release that the Biden administration is uh, suggesting that we should have, in fact, they're looking to set up an office that will actually pretty much monitor our free speech on the internet. And uh, you know what, folks, that in this country is certainly un unacceptable. In fact, here, here's what I tweeted out. I wanna show it to you and then I'll read it to you. See, that's the new symbol of the tyrants of Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Biden and others around the world. Here's what I tweeted out. Uh, America, wake up, communism on the march. The Biden administration announced that a, listen to this folks, disinformation governance board is being established to combat disinformation when, this is, think about this, when uh, in the 2022 midterm elections here in the United States, why then? It's so revealing, isn't it? Uh, and to me, this is right out of the Communist Party playbook. They're so dumb that they revealed themselves when they actually put a time attached to what they're going to do, uh, especially during an election for the United States Congress. So to the Democrats in America watching, you Democrats who are watching, I know you are, uh, your party is doomed. Believe me, you're, you're, the president has actually put the last nail in the coffin of your party. Forget his administration of your party. And if you think in any way, shape and form that we, the American patriots who are fighting for this country, are not going to uh, help and fight and partner with our Canadian brothers and sisters and friends in that nation, well, you're all wrong because we're going to stick by their side. We're going in this together and we're going to make sure we're going to make sure that we're going to do everything we could so that when we think about this, folks, when we, we reach that, that, that wonderful age that we're ready to sit under a palm tree somewhere in this world and write our memoirs and leave our legacy, we could tell our children in their time, you see that flag with the maple leaf? You see that flag with the stars and stripes? Well, those flags still fly very high and send a mighty message. And you know what that message is? Let freedom ring. God bless you all. See you Monday night when we address American issues. And then next Thursday night, we hope to have some more Canadian uh, uh, candidates hope, who are running for office. So that's it, folks. CampaignForAmerica.com. That's our website. Uh, if you'd like to be put on our mailing list, please email me through the contact page because we're sending out a lot of documents in the real near future. I'll keep you posted. Again, if you are an American citizen and we're leaving the investigators and the uh, uh, intelligence uh, analysts to those who are here in America, because we know that uh, uh, it's tough for Canadians to do this, uh, just email us and we're going to get together real soon and we're going to get the ball rolling. Okay, let freedom ring. God bless you all. And have a have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. It's great to be, I'll tell you, it's great to be a Canadian today, and it's a great to be an American. It's great to be free, for goodness sakes. Take care and God bless you.